an update to the $1,200 stimulus checks based on what we foresee in the future. Also, the government's not sending you money, so guess what? I will. As always, this video pertains to anybody in the following categories. Low income, social security recipients, whether it's retirement, disability, or survivors, SSI recipients, supplemental security income, and VA beneficiaries. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is Friday, August 21st. My name is Matt, and if you're new here, or you're watching and for some reason you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, perfect. Now that you're subscribed, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate your support. Let's get right into it and talk about this. Let's take a real quick trip down memory lane and remember what we're dealing with and kind of base that information on what we foresee happening in the future. So real quickly here, let's talk about this. The Democrats passed the HEROES Act, which included those $1,200 stimulus checks and the payments for dependents. Also, the Republicans passed their own version called the HEALS Act, including those $1,200 stimulus checks and those stimulus checks for dependents, right? So that's what we have. However, now the GOP is proposing this new skinny bill, as people are calling it. However, the deal with this new skinny bill, thin bill, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I just made that thin bill up, but yeah. Um, the, the GOP is proposing this new skinny bill. And with that, unfortunately, it's basically the price tag is about half of what it was with their original Heels Act proposal. And with that, it's basically not including those $1,200 stimulus checks. All right, before everybody freaks out, let's talk about this. And with the additional information that I have here, I'm going to talk about, we can maybe come up with some kind of conclusion on this. Let's first remember, this is an election year, right? The elections are what, two and a half months? Maybe not even, not even two and a half months from now, a little over two months from now. It's not that far away. What, does, what usually happens on election years? Well, there's a lot of political shenanigans going on, right? A lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of things that go on, a lot of deception and misleading information. So with that being said, what can we see here? With these packages that are being proposed and this lack of negotiation, this arguing between parties, this lack of coming together to do something productive, what can we assume out of this? We can anticipate this is political posturing. Why? Because we're still two and a half months out from the election. If they pass something now, that means they need to drag their feet and really drag that thing out for the next two and a half months so that you still remember who the hero is at the election on election day, right? They want you to remember who was the hero when you go and vote. So what do I mean by that? I mean, I think they're purposely dragging their feet with this whole thing so that they can drag it out into September and drag it, you know, keep talking about it through September and then finally get something passed and maybe hit the president's desk by like late September-ish, October time. So that guess what? If those second stimulus checks come, guess when they're going to hit your bank account and mailbox? Well, perfectly right in the middle or late October, right before the election. So you can go to the polls and remember who was the hero. Again, I'm not taking sides at all. Both sides are doing this. Everybody does it. It happens every year with election years. All parties are, are um, guilty of this. Everybody does it all the time. Everybody, both parties want to be the hero. They want to be the hero. They want to re be remembered when it comes time to reelect them back into their positions. So just remember that there's a lot of things being reported out there right now with all these packages and proposals and all this other crap that they're talking about because it's basically to torment the other party. They're not negotiating purposely because they need to drag this out longer. So what do you do when you don't want to negotiate? Basically, you just say, I'm firm on my position. I'm not moving. Then you just don't get any action. And then that wastes time. So it's kind of just like, um, actually, I don't know anything about sports. I was going to give a sport analogy. Basically, I know like in some sports, if they want to like, drag out the clock, maybe they'll go on, uh, they'll take like a timeout or something so they can wind the clock down so that they can get closer to the end of the game so they can basically just hold the ball and then just stand there so that they just wind the clock out, right? Again, I don't know anything about sports. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> All right, but anyway, let's talk about something else that's interesting and how we can potentially foresee the future. All right, as we look around the world, there are rising cases of COVID in many, many countries. Actually, 
there are spikes in COVID cases in a lot of different countries that are actually way higher spikes than we saw back in the heydays. The heydays being like March, April, May, when COVID was running rampant through all these countries all over the world. Well, now we're looking around the world and seeing these colored countries that are seeing spikes that are significantly greater than the biggest spikes we saw just a few months ago. So not only that, the United States has seen massive influxes of case cases over the last, what, two months or so? I mean, spikes in cases here in this country that we haven't seen back in the heydays. So what are we seeing? I don't know, trends in inc increasing cases. So interesting stuff. Let's look at another fact. Each week, the jobless claims are reported. What is this? Basically, it's a report that comes out every Thursday morning saying how many people, re um, uh, what the heck? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, reported or not reported. I'm trying to look for that word. Um, applied. Jeez, couldn't remember that word. <laughs> That's embarrassing. How many people applied for unemployment benefits? Well, last week it was in the 900,000s. This week it was 1.1 million. That's about 140,000 this week over last week. So what is my point? An additional 140,000 people applied for unemployment benefits over last week. So what does that mean? It means that more people are losing their jobs, being laid off, their businesses are closing, maybe, the, maybe they're going bankrupt, whatever is going on. So we're still looking at about a million people on average every single week applying for unemployment benefits. Well, what does that say for the health of the economy? Well, I'd have to say it's pretty bad, right? A million people each week applying for unemployment benefits? That can't be healthy. So what does this mean? All of this stuff kind of putting together. Unemployment claims, a million a week. COVID cases rising like crazy, spikes all over the world in these other countries. What does that mean for the United States? Do you think there's going to be another stimulus package? I would anticipate probably yes. But when will we see it? Probably not for a while because the, the politicians, they need to drag it out as close to that election day as possible so that they can be remembered, you know, on uh, election day. So that's just what we're, that's just, I don't know, what we're thinking. I wanted to throw that out there. Take a little trip down memory lane is, um, as we talked about and um, talk about the current information. All right. Like I said at the beginning, Venmo or uh, the government is not sending any money. So I will. So here's the deal. Um, leave your Venmo handle down below. If you have Venmo, I hope you have Venmo. If you don't have it, get it because it's free. Um, so here's the deal. Leave a comment down below, but the qualifications are you need to hit the like button. You need to be subscribed, which I'm sure many of you already are and leave a comment down below and just say whatever you want and then leave your Venmo handle. And if you can leave the last four digits of your phone number associated with your Venmo account. The reason for that is when you send money to a new person on Venmo, they say, Hey, you haven't sent money to this person before. What's the last four digits of their number. So we make sure we have the right person. So here's what I'll do. I'll probably choose, I don't know, four or five people, something like that. And I'll just send you some monies. Again, I just want to say this is not going to be 1200 bucks. I wish I could send you 1200 bucks, but that's just not realistic for me right now. However, I, I think it'd be pretty dang sweet to be able to send you $1,200. That'd be really cool. Um, I'd love to be able to get to that point, but unfortunately it's not going to be 1200, but I certainly will send you something that hopefully can help you for, I don't know, a little while anyway. But again, leave a comment, hit the like button, be sure to you're subscribed and leave a comment down below with your Venmo handle, anything else you want to say. And if you can, the last four digits of your phone number, like I said, I'll probably choose four or five people, something like that and I'll just send you something. It'd be awesome if I could continue this each and every video. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, but I'll at least do it for this one because there's just not that much information today. And that's my um, little gift to you as some monies to some of the people down in the comments section. So have a great Friday, everybody, and um, I'll catch you again soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it to be helpful, but just hang in there. Hopefully there's something else coming down the road in the future, but we won't know until the politicians decide to start talking once again, rather than just arguing with each other all day or even worse, not